Thank you. Hey guys, happy Friday. Just gonna click these buttons really quick. Thanks for being here. Um, today is a really fun, uh, kind of like a wire wire class in gemstones. Um, it's something that um, is a it's a classic kind of structure for a wire wrapped bracelet. Um, you'll hear people call them cluster bracelets, and it's not only for bracelets, but you can do it for earrings too. So a lot of the techniques here can be made into different kinds of jewelry. But in general, the basic structure of it is to put together a large gemstone, a large gemstone bead strand and then add little dangles to jump rings in between each one. And so bracelets like these are really labor intense. Um, they use a lot of wire and materials, but I found a way to make them a little more consistent and a little faster by using your bail forming pliers. And so today I'm going to just show that. Um, and we've used a technique similar to this for a couple other things. So this will be familiar to a lot of you guys. Um, we're just going to use these bail forming pliers to make um, some of these connections go a little smoother. All right, and so I hope you will love this technique and it'll inspire other ideas. As, as a lot of you guys always have some great stuff posted after class that I'm like, wow, I wish I thought of that, that's cool. So I'm sure there'll be tons of that from this class. Um, but here what I have on the mat is all the materials that I'll be using today. And you know, it's a lot of stuff, but it can all be used um, more than one time. Because for example, when I went back to the shop to find another set of these gemstones, it was sold out. So I found some others, but I still have enough left for my first set to make two bracelets. So I wanted to just point that out too. But the first thing you'll need is to select. Well, I think the best thing to do is grab one of these bundles. You could individually, you know, go and buy strands that have the sizes you need. Um, but I also wanted to mention that you can use different sizes. You don't have to stick with the sizes that I've used. So this technique will work for a lot of different beads. I wanted to show these though, just because if you like having it all ready to go, having all the sizes you need, these are two that I found um, that are similar to the poppy cluster. So this one is red quartzite. So I have all this left, right? This one is the one that's in the handout. All these SKUs are in the PDF. So you can build the cart from, from the PDF and put it into your app. Um, but when I went back, like I said, when I went to my local to get more of this, so I could just show a fresh one on the card, um, this was sold out. And so I found more in other strands. I saw sodalite. I saw pyrite. Um, I think there was jaspers. There were agates, natural different, like lots of different dyed agates in different colors. And I think there was even a rose quartz and like another quartzite in a different color. So have a blast. Go see what they've got. Um, and you know bring your coupons and do that i think there's a strand still going on like buy one get one 50 off or something like that so that's how i come i have two and so that's what you'll need in the way of like the beads themselves okay and then some of the other stuff you'll need you need some 22 gauge wire and this is german style so it's got a little bit more um you know a, a little firmer feel to it and so it's going to hold the shape a little bit more and then i've got a bunch of findings so we're gonna need two different sizes of jump rings. I'm gonna use these to join each of the segments and I'm gonna use these to drop a cluster uh, off of each of these, these little dangles. These are some little three millimeter, 14 or sorry, 18 karat gold plated. This is like really beautiful. It, it just levels up your design. And I used it with my small chips here. It's a little embellishment. Also used it as a weight for the chain. And we're gonna use some head pins. So these are about one inch, 2.5 centimeters. And then last but not least, I've got some chain. And you can use any chain you want, you have. This is the paperclip chain. And it looks really good with this color here. They match um, really closely. You'll also need some lobster claws. And I um, have the lobster claw here. Let me dump that out. And there's a little gold-plated lobster claw. So that's pretty much everything in the way of like materials for tools. I mentioned the bail forming pliers. We're gonna be working with a small two millimeter setting on that. If you're using round nose, that's totally fine. Round nose are gonna work really great too. And I have some of those handy. So the other things I have here in front of me are some flush cutters and I've got chain nose, bent nose and square nose. And I'll just be bringing these out here and there as we go. But these is, this is something you would find in a basic wire working set. 
of pliers. All right. So a quick, just brief walk through the handout. Everything I'm going to do today, you don't have to memorize. So it's all going to be right here in your, um, your class PDF, including everything I just showed you in the way of materials. These numbers in the app will get you each item into your cart. And so all of the little segment, like segments and things we're going to build, those are all like listed right here. So you have all the instructions, all the measurements, all the quantities, and some basic like refresher on the type of loops we're going to do. Okay, so um, there's three parts to this. The first part is building the larger gemstone links. They look like this. And I kind of break it down factory style for me because it makes it faster for me to remember where, you know, what I need to do next. But you'll start with the eight millimeter gemstones from your strand. If you're going to work with eight millimeters like I am and you want to make about a seven inch bracelet, you will need about nine repeats. And we'll link those up with six millimeter jump rings. And then from each of those jump rings, we'll hang some dangles. And those dangles consist of large chips. You could replace this with like a four millimeter bead if you didn't have chips. But these four millimeter-ish, some of them are a little bit bigger because they're all irregular and different. We're gonna add those to a smaller jump ring and hang those from the larger ones in between each segment. And then last but not least, we'll create one more little dangle to go on that same spot. So it goes pretty fast. Um, if you set it up, set up your work area to be kind of, you know, just like an assembly line. And that's what I did. So let's start with the gemstones, the large gemstones. So our base link. And also, um, I, was, I think I missed a question in the chat, but feel free anytime to jump in with questions and we'll get those answered for you. Okay. Um, so again, this is 22 gauge wire and it's the round kind. And use any color you want. I'm using gold. You can use any kind of gold, silver, uh, bronze. I think any color will work fine. And I'm just flattening my wire with some nylon jaw pliers. That's just an optional thing I like to do. And let's measure two inches. So each of these um, two inches is about, about what you need you know, give or take a quarter inch or so, it's still gonna work. And using your flush cutters, just go ahead and cut that. And then what I like to do when I'm creating something like this is I'll go ahead and use that first one, the one I measured to make more. So just kind of put it together with the rest of the spool and down the other side. And we'll just trim right there. And you can just use your fingers to straighten them out too. So make nine of those. I got a few of mine made already. So I'm just gonna go with these two and demo it twice. And then we can always demo it again too, if you wanna see it more than twice, but I've got two ready and then the rest of mine are ready to go here. All right, so let's start with our, our bail making pliers. Again, I'm working at the small two millimeter round. If you're using your regular round nose pliers, that's totally fine. Just kind of eyeball it. Eyeball it for about two millimeters. It doesn't actually matter if it's exact. It's still gonna work. Okay, and so I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna start by pinching that new wire that I just cut in between the tool. And I like to kind of just make sure it's flush. So I'm just checking that, checking that out. And what I'm going to do is roll this forward until I connect with the wire on the other side. And when I get to this spot right here, I can't keep going unless I reposition my tool. So what I'll do is just kind of hold it in place and spin the tool back up. And I'll spin it back this way. And I like to take the opportunity at this spot to kind of push the tail down. See how there's a tail right there? Just go ahead and use your tool to flatten that, make it look really precise and nice. And then keep rolling around until you reach the spot where you see it, the tail that we started with, the, um, 
the point where we began. So there's, you know, two, almost three little coils going around the tool. And from here, what I like to do is I'll move the tool up once again. So I'm pushing down where that tail is, see? And just hold it. And then go ahead and just move the wire. So I'm moving this part just to give my, um, my loop more of an eye pin look like that. And I'll make another one really quick just to show you what it looks like before you do that last little step to show you the difference. So let's do one more. Again, just making sure it's flush. I'm just gonna roll forward. Go ahead and let it cross itself. Take that opportunity to push the tail down here. Just keep going around until you see the end pop up again. Hold it in place. This is where I do the bend up. Let's stop here and I'll show you the difference. So one is centered and then one is not. And how that would look on your gemstone. I see what kind of hang down like that versus this. So that one little step makes a huge difference. So it's that versus, oop. Let's see if I can get them side by side for you. Still gonna work, but which one do you like better, right? So let me show you how I did that one more time. I had this on the coil. Sorry, I had the coil on the tool. And sorry, it's backwards. So it was like that. And I got to where that end appears again. And then just cover it up. And right here, I'm just going to push this up just a little bit. And take that up. And that looks really cool. It's strong. This is already a pretty strong wire to start with. And that activity that we just did, work hardened it even more. So it's gonna hold the shape really nice. So let's finish the top. And so this is where it's gonna look um, three, maybe two, maybe three. And it's not gonna show up too dramatically, but you see how on this one, I've got three coils and here I've got two. So that's probably my starting side. It's, it's actually okay to have a little variation. And it makes it look, I don't know, it just gives it some texture, I think. You see more metal this way. So if you're if you're really digging the color of your wires, pretty cool. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is kind of the same thing that we did before, but I'm gonna look at a couple of things as I get the tool started, looking at the position of this one. And I wanna make my like my little Saturns in plane with each other, like that. It's a little harder to spin them than if it was a simple loop um, or even a wrapped loop because you have to secure these two together and they don't they don't do exactly what you want when you've got um, a coil versus a single loop. So it's easier to do it now. Um, what I do is just kind of like, I'll center it like this and get the tool ready. And then just as I'm going, I'm just staying cognizant of, of where I am here. And I'm going to show one extra trick as you get down to the bottom here. When it gets to right here, you can do another little bend, see, to make it kind of go. And take it off the tool. And if you want it to be exactly like your other one, where you see how this has three and this one has two, what you can do is you can trim it just like you're making jump rings. I don't know if anyone's ever done that, but you can come along with your uh, wire nippers and just remove one coil very gently. And if you want them to match, you can make a match that way. So let's do that one more time. And watch those little stray wires because sometimes those can end up um, on the floor. And if you have pets or if you just have Bare feet, <laughs> the kids are you later. All right, so one more time, just gonna roll forward.
And in my excitement, I believe I skipped one thing that I wanted to share. So I'm gonna make one more of these. Another little two inch measure. And everyone who saw it, yes, definitely, I did skip something, so. All right, I'm gonna make one more. Let's start that coil again. Now roll it forward. There's the bend there that I was going all about. And I need one more gemstone. So let's grab that one. And we'll pop it on there. Okay. I meant to show this when I did the others and I didn't remember to do it, but you need to bend this down like that. And then you'll get the same result with, with bending this one on that side. Apologies, I forgot to show that. I was wondering why it wasn't working for me. I'm like, ah. Okay, so that's um, an extra thing that can help. Bend it first. And again, I'm staying in plane with where my first side was. I'm just gonna roll it forward. There we go. All right. Let's find the one I just made so I can compare it. I think that's the one. No, that was the, here we go. Yeah, good. Okay, so you see how that one isn't, it's got a little rolled forward look. It looks like, um, like a P-shape versus one that just secures right snugly like that. No P-shape, just loops right next to the bead. So apologies, I didn't show that one part. It is in the handout though. Right there, bend it forward. <laughs> and I practiced right before class and still forgot. So it's just something to remember. I'm gonna select out the one that has the P shape. And we'll use the one I just made. Okay, so going on to, going on to, we're gonna need some of these now. And in each of these sections, we're gonna make eight. So make eight with large chips and then make eight with a smaller chip and then a little like gemstone or sorry, um, precious metal bead on it. So in each of these cases, um, we're gonna do a different wrap style. So on this one, we're gonna do the wrap style we did on the first on these. And then on this one, we're just gonna do a regular wrap loop because it was a little easier with the small um, for me to hold on to. So I'll show show both versions and how they work. So what you'll wanna do when you get your chip strands, so, and there's a lot of variation. You'll see some chips are like this, they're like really teeny teeny. Some of them can be a little, you know, more bulky. And within each strand, you'll get a lot of variation. So like my poppy strand had some that were larger and some that were smaller. And I just sat there for a second and I selected out eight big ones and eight little ones. And so that's all you gotta do for that. And I have some of them done already and some of them ready to show. So let's show the big ones first. Let's get our head pin. First two. And I'm just gonna pick a side, any side. Let's go with this one. Okay, and then I'm not gonna forget to do the part that I forgot in the last part. We're gonna bend it first. So I just put it on on the head pin, and then just go ahead and bend it a little bit like that. That's the magic sauce right there to make it center. And then I'm gonna roll forward. And you can trim this down if you like. You can trim it now or you can trim it after you roll, just to see what you like. When, For example, all the chips are a different size, so I felt like it, measuring it didn't really make sense for the chip. It might make more sense if you're using a bead that's the same size. But I'm looking at this and I'm seeing how in this case it worked out where this little part is facing up. So I'm gonna trim it so that the tail, the pokey part's toward the bottom. Pull that up. Okay. 
be really careful not to cut all your coils. You just want to cut one. That's a little better. And you don't have to do that. It's just kind of something I do. It's a knit. So there's one. Now let's see how this one looks. This one is going to use a lot of wire because it's very, very um, flat. So I might trim a little bit off. Maybe like that much. I'm eyeballing it based on how much I think is going to be about the number of coils I want. And just basing it on the height difference between this one and that one. It's going to go awkward. <laughs> That's less than these comment. That's funny. Yeah, no, I, I have a lot of wire mishaps. I'm, I'm, I am kind of scared to teach them live. I just brave up sometimes. Wire's hard, guys. Like seed beating, the like top secret seed beating is easier than wire, FYI. So there's those. They look pretty cute. I'm always really happy with how that comes out. And these um, types of wraps, there you don't see them as much in, in a lot of jewelry out there, but I think they're really strong. And I'm surprised they aren't used more because they are, they're really... Um, and like, if you were really desperate and you needed to get something on one, they're a split ring. That's basically what you just made. You made a split ring and you could, you could do what you do with a regular split ring and connect it to something if you had to. It's easier to just to uh, jump ring it, but definitely it's something you could do. But I'm going to change it up for these because these are really small. Um, and I selected out these teeny ones here from my strand. It's a little harder to do the technique I just showed. It's possible and it'll still work, but I wanted to show another way that can sometimes be a little easier with something tiny. And I'm gonna grab a few more of those headphones. And there's these two. All right. So I'm gonna switch to more round nose now. I'm gonna grab a pair of round nose pliers, regular old round nose. And I'm gonna bring on a chip. It's a small chip onto the onto the headband there. Pick up one of these beads. And let's just do a regular good old wrap loop. So for me, what I like to do is I get the bend started at the smallest point I can on my plier, bend it forward. You can also bend it without putting the plier if it's soft enough. These are a little strong, so I use my pliers to help me for that. And then I'm going to try to, here's where we are now. Let me show you guys. Got that bent. I need to bring it back up around the plier. And I don't have a lot of room to position this, so I just kind of give it a start, right? Give it a start and then bring the tool like that so you can get a rounder around a uh, loop there. Bring it all the way around. And then from here, a lot of people reposition their plier and keep bending. I do something different. It's just a little bit weird, but I'll take this and bend it down like that to give me like a crossover. So I feel like it makes the, it keeps the round shape better. It just works for my hand. I know it's a little unusual, but that's kind of how I do my wraps. There's more than one way to do that. And then I get that held right there. And bring that forward. If this is hard on your hands, grab another plier and just get some assist there. And so I'm gonna get about two wraps on there. And very carefully, um, okay, so this is the part where I'm, I'm supposed to mention eye protection. Always when you do this step, it goes flying. And it's um, it can be dangerous because it tends to just aim for the eye no matter where your eyes are. <laughs> so um, what I do is when I'm gonna make one of these trims, I'll, I'll hold it like I am now to get the position, right? And of course I'm doing it with the flush side down. Get that right there. And then before I do the cut, I'm gonna grab it. So I've got that piece in my hand. Not gonna go on my floor, not gonna go on my eye. Or you could just put on some glasses. That would be good too. If you want to let the uh, let the wire fly. 
All right, and so these are some square nodes. I'm gonna hold my loop in place. I'm gonna get some chain nodes. I'll just flatten that down. Okay, so let's do that one more time. And we've got those here. Chip and then my little three millimeter bead here. Again, here's a round nose. I got those just right there at the tip. We bend forward. So we get something that looks like that. And I've got it positioned now at the 90 degree angle. Start bringing this up. But before you keep going, bring the plier down a little bit, meaning slide it down so that the loop is going to be bigger. The further down you work on around those plier, the bigger the diameter of the loop you'll get. And I'm eyeballing it for kind of what I did before. You get into that point where it's about to cross. And from here, keep it on the tool. I keep my pressure here. And I'm just going to bend the actual apparatus here the bead and the chip bead to kind of match like that. And let's switch over, switch over to my square nose. I think I like doing this because I used to work a lot with delicate breakable beads. This gives me more control over what's happening above my bead than the, if I was to continue to move it around the tool. You can really see what's happening there. All right. Get that trim. And if you want to, sometimes it needs it, sometimes it doesn't. But if you want to put it back on your round nose pliers, and then just go ahead and bend very gently so that it's hanging in a direct line like that. You can do that if you want to. And then again, I'm going to flatten my tail. Oops, my tool slipped a little bit there, but it is okay. One of the benefits of having a one of those metal beads versus a gemstone there is if your tool slips, you're going to be okay. <laughs> okay, so now we have all our parts made. Eight of these, eight of these, and nine of those. So we'll need our lobster claw. We're going to need some of the jump rings. We'll need uh, one for each of these and then these to join. Are there any questions so far? It was sure. pretty quiet out there. <laughs> Danielle, I hate to interrupt you when you're on a roll. No worries, please do. <laughs> so yeah, no, sidebar is great. Um, lots yeah. of hellos from the regulars and uh, no, you're good to go. All right, cool, okay. This is just a fun one. This is a little easy breezy fun project. I know a lot of you guys out there have a lot of experience in making this kind of jewelry already. So you guys are probably just having fun playing along. So what I'm using here is the larger jump ring. So the six millimeter. And real quick, let's just link them together. I'm using square nose and bent nose. Whoop. And what I do with my jump rings, give a click. I was listening for that click and kind of giving it a, um, a, a backwards and forwards motion. It puts a spring-loaded pressure on your jump ring, makes it extra strong, and it locks that seam in. And I'm kind of a jump ring perfectionist. When I'm working by myself, it's not uncommon to see me sit there and do this more than a couple of times. I sometimes go a little faster in class, but be a little perfectionist today. Yeah, so there they go. This for me is the funnest part. You've done all that work, all that assembly putting together all your pieces, and now you get to put them together. This is a really beautiful chain too. 
see it starts to how it starts to look. And I'm just finding the seam and opening these in a lateral motion. Connect one and then connect the other side. Get those bent down. And it goes pretty fast. It doesn't take a long time to make these. I think the real time being spent in making those little pieces. And I feel like that um, that mistake I was making when I first started showing these gems, I'm actually kind of glad I did that because then you can see how, um, how it makes a difference, right? Bending that wire down before you do the roll. I do forget that a lot. Because you just start going, you start going super, super fast and you're like, oh, I'm getting this done so quick. And then, oh man. <laughs> That does definitely look um, much improved since you once you bend the wire forward first. All right, last one. And see some of my coils just ended up having three. Usually that second side. All right, there's our chain. That by itself is a beautiful piece of jewelry and it's strong. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put on the um, embellishments first and then we'll do the, it doesn't really matter which order you do it. You can do your chain and your lobster claw now or we can do them at the end. And just to have less stuff moving around, I'm gonna put these on first. So. Let's see, still using my square nose and still using my bent nose. I'm gonna grab a four millimeter. So now I'm working with, sorry, five millimeter jump ring. You could use a four or a five. I think I just grabbed, grabbed the five because I thought they looked really good next to, next to these. But definitely, you know, use what you have and all you gotta do is attach each one. So I'm gonna go, this one here and attach it to one of these. So there's one large gemstone chip on there. And here's one of the small embellishments. Let's get that one also on a five millimeter jump ring. And I'm gonna attach it to the same side, just next to it. And something I got asked, um, not on this project, but on one that was kind of similar, was should I dangle them both from the same side? And that's really your style. I like it like this with them added to, um, for example, some people might put one here and the other one on this side. And it's gonna be locked because keep in mind, it can't go over your connectors here. The These two, we're calling each of these a connector at this point. And so if you put them both on this side, they stay locked on this side. If you put one over here, one over here, you get something where there's stuff going on in both directions, but we tend to wear our bracelets facing downward, I feel like. And so in, in my original, I've got them all locked on one side but it's gonna work no matter what. And it's just style. It's just, what do you like? What well, looks good to you? I decided I liked that. And so I'm just gonna keep adding them really quick. And it's a great time for questions because I'm just doing kind of assembly line at this point. Let me think of anything else you might want. Oh, another thing I did do, um, I'm just a stickler for patterns. <laughs> I did my big bead and then my little one, big and little. I probably did that without even noticing that I did that, but it doesn't surprise me.
and it does not have to be like that. I just liked it. Danielle, Cindy noticed that uh, you really love symmetry. <laughs> it's true. I should, um, I need to do more like messy stuff, right? But you know, what I, I like about this project, Danielle, is it looks very complicated and, and, and difficult um, when, you know, because I see these projects in just a picture format before instructions come in. And I thought, oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we can do this in an hour. Um, but clearly you can, and this is a great maker project for anyone who's doing a craft show or is actually selling jewelry. It's not, it's not as hard as I thought it was going to be. Oh, good. I'm glad you're saying that. Cause that means it was, it was taught in a way that gives confidence, right? I'm hoping that, hoping that's a good thing. Yes, but you're using gemstones. So this is a really, and 18 karat gold plated findings. I mean, this is a quality piece of jewelry. Would you, um, with the gang here, what would you recommend people price something like this? Oh, definitely. So um, you can price these up, guys. Uh, it's not going to cost you. Um, if you if you get a, a good deal on these gemstones, like I did, um, like a sale and a coupon day, not going to cost you as much. You can get at least two pieces of jewelry, maybe three out of one of those strand, strand bundles. And... Um, Let's see, with the findings being gold, I'm just making a guess here, but you could probably charge at least 75 for one of these US. Yeah, I'm seeing a few nodding heads. And we agree. I, I didn't use my spreadsheet for that, but um, you know, that's just me kind of pulling that out of my, you know, back of the napkin kind of idea. And it would um, vary, like depending on how many repeats and things like that, right? No, and I think too, like Marguerite just said, she started doing her components last night and she's already so pleased with the outcome. So mm -hmm. that's great news. And I, I think if anyone is is going to work with the gemstones and you are selling it at a higher price point, um, that's great, especially if you include in some additional information about the attributes of the stones, um, because I think people like that as well. Oh yeah, if you tell them the... Um the stones properties like people love to mm -hmm. read that and i used to print on my labels when i used to make all of my um my own packaging i used to say this is a real gemstone this is a real gold plated finding and then folks with um questions about the um the metals often really appreciate seeing what kind of metal it is yes This goes pretty fast. Um, something else I'm doing is I'm, I've got a front and a back. So there's my back where the tail is, right? And I decided this is my front and I am deliberately hanging them all facing the same. So when I do a photograph, I'll make sure I lay it out on that side. So you only see the pretty side of my wraps. I mean, they're pretty on both sides, but the front, you know how the front always looks, the place where the wire crossed over in the front. It looks just, you know, amazing. So kind of what I'm doing there. And whoops, I made an error there. It's easy to do, but I attached this one to that one and that was not intentional. I was just kind of going a little fast. Let me fix that. All right, so where are we here? I want to get that one over here. Danielle, a quick design question. Would you put two stones on one finding? On one of the like of the headpins? Yes. Would you put yeah. two together? Oh, sure. Yeah. If they fit and it works. And I think there are longer ones. So I'm using the one inch. In this collection, there's a 1.5. So you could get two on there. And something I didn't do yet, but that I want to do is make one of these as an earring with a bunch of them hanging from a chain. So you would, um, I've seen a lot of designers do this where they maybe take an inch of chain and on each of the links, they'll attach four or five of these little clusters we made. And they, they cascade down like a little waterfall. It's a classic um, gemstone technique that I love. 
every time somebody makes one of those, I stop mid scroll and I just check it out. Almost to the end here. It's a lot of the same thing over and over again, but by the time you make one of these, you are really good at wraps and jump rings. Here's one of the small ones. And we're almost there. That's the pretty side. Let's get that pretty side going forward there. So I wouldn't say that this um, neck the necklace, this bracelet, I wouldn't say it has a front or a back, except for if you're doing a macro photo. And if you're gonna put this on your website and you're doing a really tight photo on it. This little extra um, OCD-ness that I'm putting into it here will serve you well in that photo. People are always saying, oh, those wraps are so beautiful. I'm like, yeah, you saw them on the front side. <laughs> and then when someone's wearing it, it doesn't matter. You, can, you don't need to wear it front or back. But every single one of those little, little ones I added, the, um, the front, see, it's facing front. So when you do your photo and you lay it out, and you just go like that, everything will be front sides. And last one. And so this is complete except for um, putting the closure on it. So I'm going to do some little bells and whistles, but we've got the, the basic um, bracelet done. And before the class, it ended up being with nine repeats, about six and a half. So when it's got its extra stuff on it, we're gonna be looking at a seven inch bracelet. So I need to put one of these on. I'm gonna use six millimeter jump ring here. And then I'm gonna probably use, let's see, another, an idea that I had for the paper clip chain was to maybe use either a smaller or a bigger. I don't think it matters too much, but I might go with the smaller. Make this as long as you'd like it. If you're going to a show, sit down at your show with one of these with you and bring your tools. And I know I've shared this before, but it's like, I promise it'll sell jewelry. If somebody puts this on and they want it to be longer or shorter, you can change that chain right on the spot for them. Pop that jump ring off and change that and give them an extender chain or shorten the one that's on it. But I'm gonna make this an inch just because it kind of just makes sense. We'll make it, well, on the paperclip chain, that's only four links. I think inch to an inch and a half. Let's go with, let's cut this one here. I think that's what I did before. But this is to your eye, what you think looks good. And we'll put a little dangle on that. So let's attach it. All right. Okay, that side's good. Let's get the lobster claw on. I'm using a larger jump ring for the lobster claw so it can wiggle just a little bit more. All right, super, super easy. All right, so when you're putting on jewelry, it can sometimes help to have weight on the end of the chain. So I'm gonna grab one more of these. And I'm gonna put something here. On this one, I just did a regular wrapped loop with one little bead, but you could do anything you wanted. And this is also a chance to put a charm, something special. I like to put charms on the chain side. If I was gonna do a charm here, I'd put it like right there. That would just be because that's what I think looks good, but you can really put it anywhere. And so let's get a bead. One more of these. And something I got in this set that I didn't use, I think there were some four millimeter 
beads. Yeah, there are. See, I still have all these left. I didn't use the really big bead or the really small. These are probably six millimeter, not four. So I feel like that's a little big. But some of the strands come with a four millimeter. Like, uh, gosh, this one. Six, eight, and a four. So I could do, I could do that. This one is again six, eight, and four. For some reason, this other one, this Perry Quartz one, had six, eight, and ten and chips. So it was a little different. So let's just Danielle, use that. we'll go with that. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm. Uh, it was my last request today because um, people just wanted to see you put um, uh, turn something small into the um, finding. So okay. if you wouldn't mind doing this extra slow. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. So this one's just a regular regular one inch head pin and a bead, and I'm just gonna do that same trick I like to do for my regular wraps. So I'm getting the very smallest part of my pliers and just doing a little forward bend on that. And then I'll take the pliers, bring them up, bring that around, slide it down a little bit. And there you go. And so from here, I'm going to bend this part back so that it makes kind of like a perpendicular to my tool. And I'm done with my round nose. Get my square nose, hold that in place. With a tiny bead like this, it's much easier um, to use your tools here. I'm going to get around this two times, that two coils. And uh, you're going to get to see it again because guess what I did? <laughs> Shout out if you don't. <laughs> um, I'll finish this one and then I'll show you what I did. Okay, so I'm going to hold this. And it's not, you didn't make a piece of jewelry if you don't do this once. Just gonna flatten that down. Oop. Try not to scratch it up. Anyway, I wanted my whole goal it was to attach it to the bottom of this chain. And then I didn't do it. <laughs> so let's get another one. You could put a jumper in, you could, and that would be totally fine. But I really want it to be on the chain, right? In fact, Look, I forgot here too, that's what I did. So that's one way, but I, I really want it to be on there. So let's show let's show linking something. We haven't shown that. Um, here's another one of those little three millimeter um, gold-plated beads, head pin. Okay, I'm just gonna put that there, push forward. Bring the tool up. Start to start to bring that loop up, but before you keep going, slide down so you get a little bit bigger of a loop. Bring that around, and then just bring the bead back. So it's like that. And now, <laughs> before I do anything else, I'm gonna actually put it on a chain. So we've got. You see how it's kind of open? We can get that on here. This is also how you can link it to another one. And get the chain on there. Now I'll get the pliers, hold that in place. Now let's do that bend there. Okay, again, very gently, I'm going to get this ready to cut, but before I cut it, hold it. And that side's good. Let's get that pressed down. There we go. I'm just straightening out the coil until I like it. So there we go. And it's a little extra dainty thing that you won't really notice so much as a feature. It's 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 functional, right? It it's beautiful, but it's also going to make when you're putting on this bracelet, it's going to make the chain a little smidge heavier, so you can get it on easier. And I always put my jewelry on the other way, so let's try to get that on there. Oop. And there we go. So it just makes it hang. 
easier to put on. And there's your bracelet. So super easy. You can make a necklace this way too. I think it would be very gorgeous as a necklace. Oh, and an anklet. We're, we're in summer now. We could do anklets in the same way. Okay, so if, um, if there's anything that I went too fast on, please let me know. We've got enough time to show show one more time if I missed anything or we can um, show what's coming up next week. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Lucy. Lucy says really nice. Thank you. Yeah, I was excited about this one. I, was, I made this one a while ago. And so um, it was actually something I just made because I wanted to. And then I'm like, hey, this could be a class. Let's make it a class. So those those end up being kind of the best classes, right? And then something I'm going to get to these ones. I'm going to make these, turn these into the same thing. Oh, thank you, Brenda. Thank you so much. Danielle, just a designer question is, um, how, how do you decide on your metal with your semi-precious? Oh, so actually I was just having that same thought um, because I was getting down to the, the last of my gold wire. And so I think these would be beautiful on silver. And it'd also be really beautiful on stainless. So I, you could do anything really. What I might do is go with some silver German style and use my stainless bindings with this purple, especially, but this would also be gorgeous on gold. So either way, I think you probably can't go wrong. And uh, as Cindy's recommending copper with the pink. Oh, copper. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, uh, there is a, gosh, it's a rose gold. There's a rose gold. Um, I don't know if it's, it's comprehensive throughout the findings line, but I know there's definitely paper flip chain, like the one I'm using in the rose gold. And, and Danielle, yes, you do have requests to see what's coming up. Coming up. All right. Let's see. Um, we've got next week is our, is our flat spiral double. And so we're just going to do a kind of a reprise of flat spiral rope, but then combine it with another section. So you kind of make, make one bracelet first. That's kind of what you do. And then you come back and you add each section to it really satisfying the way it stitches up. It comes out really pretty. And then after that, we're going to do a um, a herringbone, but it's odd count. And so that's another question that I got asked recently is can you do odd count in a herringbone design? And you absolutely can. And it's actually, it's a, it's a great technique to have because it can give you a center point. Center points are cool. Um, I didn't do this here, but something we could grow into later is we can add, once you've got the technique down for center pointing, we can add a big crystal in the center, one all the way down. So that's a cool thing with like a, with herringbone that I love doing is to embed something in the, in the middle. So we'll go ahead and just do a basic embellished odd count for this one. And then that'll be something we can look forward to for our next class. Maybe we'll do that in July or something. Um, and then let's see, after that, I'm trying to remember the order. But the next one on is a color class. So we're going to do like a color theory study of colors. And um, that is more of like a question and answer. I don't have a project for that one, but we'll definitely make a seed bead mix. And one of the seed bead mixes I made, I took an old tube that I had handy. I took a bunch of these colors. I sprinkled in a few others. Like there's some opaque black in there. I made my own mix and then made it into a class. So this is our um, odd count button cuff. That will do for, I believe this is the first June class. We got that right. But hang on. Yeah, because we're in May now, right? Don't quote me on that. I need to write the date still. <laughs> but yeah, it's the next class after we do this one. So we get uh, after the color class, sorry. Uh, so we go from this one, colors class, then this one. Anyway, this is going to be cool. We're going to make a mix in color class and then we'll stitch it up the next week. Um, And then some crystal stuff coming up. My earrings are on. Uh, I've got a matching crystal earrings and sparkly swoosh of crystal uh, three-way wrap. So you can just go around and around. This could also be a choker. You can make this into a lot of stuff. So that's what we've got so far on the website to register for. And then there's more coming. So stand, stand by, stay tuned for that. There'll be more stuff coming. But yeah, next week, please join us for this one. It'll be cool. Yeah, so um, if anyone has any questions about these, I can answer them too. If you want to know like uh, 
um, like what supplies are here. They're all the, all the handouts are downloadable. So like when you go to michaels.com slash classes and you um, look at the like the page where you register, it's kind of buried underneath all the materials. But if you scroll down past the materials, all of these are linked and you can get them even before you register. You can just download them right there. And um, then you'll have it handy and before class so you can see what's coming up. Yeah, so um, gosh, let's see. Anything else I can think of to tell you guys? There's going to be, um, am I forgetting anything, Carmi? I feel like I'm going forget. Oh, happy Mother's Day. <laughs> happy Mother's yeah. Day, guys. Um, if everyone has a great Sunday, I hope you all have a great time for that. Um, I think my boys are planning something. I don't know what they're doing, but they've, they've been up to something. They've been a little quiet, so we'll see. Danielle, uh, on behalf of all of us at John B. too, happy Mother's Day. And oh, thank, um, you. thank you for another, um, the sidebar is full of congratulations and thank yous for this class. Well-timed oh, as always. We've made it in the hour. And I think um, quite a few people have some fun planned for the weekend working with this pattern. Oh, thanks so much, guys. And if you um, create something, share it with us. Um, hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag John Bead so we can see it and uh, post on our Facebook group if you're there. And you can check out stuff on our blog. It's blog.johnbead.com. Best way to find the Facebook group if you're not already in it. And uh, other than that, yeah, um, feel free to reach out if you have questions for me when you start working. I'm always happy to help. All right, guys. So, um, I'll just say goodbye and have a great weekend.